Hi. The 201 Pocket Piano from Critter and Guitari is a two-in-one bundle of polar opposites. On the one hand, it's a small synth with a minimal set of controls and no screen. And yet, under the hood, it's infinitely customizable and tweakable, using anything from simple text files or samples to pure data patches and open source code. It comes with a built-in sequencer, six synth engines, and five arpeggiator patterns, but each of the synth engines and arp patterns can be either customized or totally swapped out with engines or patterns you can download from a growing list of options available online, or ones you tweak or make yourself. In this video, I'll take a look at 201 Pocket Piano in depth, its pros and cons, including how it compares to its bigger brother, the Organelle. Before I start, a quick disclosure, Critter and Guitari sent me the 201 Pocket Piano. Other than that, no money changed hands, they have no say over the content of this video, and don't get to see it before it's published. This channel is funded mainly by viewers who subscribe to exclusive content and book updates on Patreon, YouTube Premium and Ads, and price check affiliate links in the description, which help the channel regardless of the product you choose to buy. Okay, let's start with an overview of what you get straight out of the box without any tinkering, downloading, or coding. The 201 Pocket Piano, or 201 for short, is very easy to use and straightforward. You've got an almost two octave keyboard with non-velocity sensitive rock maple keys, a shift key to perform various functions alongside the keys as labeled above and below the keys. So for example, you've got a metronome to help with sequencing or octave up and down keys, two octaves up and down. And then there are five pot style knobs on top. The left and right ones always do the same thing. The one on the left controls tempo and the one on the right controls overall volume. And then the three knobs in the middle have different functions based on the sound engine you choose. Typically the knob on the left controls decay and then the knob in the middle, brightness or timbre, and the knob on the right, some other surprise parameter, in this case vibrato. But this isn't always the case, it totally depends on the sound engine. The 201 gives you immediate access to six synth engines by holding shift and using the top six white keys. So this is engine number one, engine number two, engine number three, four, five, and six. And then the six white keys on the left with shift give you access to various patterns. The one on the far left means no ARP and different arpeggiator patterns for the others with pretty interesting twists I'll talk about later. There's a latch function for the arpeggiator. You can turn it on and latch chords. The LED on the right lights up in different colors based on the synth engine you choose. Hopefully you can see this, but it's an RGB LED. Same goes for the one in the middle, lights up in different colors based on the arpeggiator pattern. And then the one on the left flashes according to the tempo and is a status indicator for the sequencer. More on that in a bit. You manage the sequencer using shift and this key, and you can save entire machine states called presets here using this button and move between machine states using these two buttons with shift, of course. Let's take a quick look at the bundled factory synths. The first one is called red mode. It's got four wave shapes. There's no filtering here, so I think morphing between the wave shapes would have been nice. And vibrato. Like I mentioned earlier, as well as decay, which applies to most of the other sounds. The next synth is an additive synth. You can travel between its harmonics using this knob. This controls decay, and then this controls portamento. Number three is a drum synth, where each key is a different drum synth. various sound design controls. Synth number four is called guitar, a physical modeling based synth. Number five is vocal two. 
It's a formant based synth. So this is great for creating vocal or formant style sounds. And then synth number six is sample, which as its name implies, plays different samples across the keyboard, in this case, a drum kit. And if you transpose it up and down, it'll play different samples. The knobs here, control decay and pitch and randomization. All these samples appear as WAV files on the SD card and you can swap them out. And then you've got five factory arpeggiator patterns. Now this is where things start to get a bit surprising in a good way. So you've got a couple of standard arps. For example, number two is an up arp, strumming upwards through notes you play. And number four does that across two octaves. But then another type of arpeggiator is really a form of short sequence that gets transposed based on the note you play when you press it. And that's number five in this case. Now, if I press a single note, it may seem like a simple up and down arp, but if I press more than one note, let's say simultaneously, then you'd think it's a chord arp, but if I don't press them simultaneously, then each note plays the up down sequence based on the timing I pressed it. So this ARP is more of a transposed sequencer than an arpeggiator, and you can customize these patterns using simple text files on the SD card. And then another type of arpeggiator here is what I call scientifically whatever Critter and Guitari decided to program in pure data. And there are two of those bundled here, number three and six. So on one note, it seems like a normal ARP, but things change pretty dramatically when you press more than one note. Try out number six. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on here, but it sounds nice to me. This one is called Double Randoms. Aside from the arpeggiator, the 201 also has a built-in sequencer, which is very simple to operate. You can only record live into it, so it's not a step sequencer. The loop point is quantized to the internal metronome, so it does help to turn that on if you want to record. Let's arm for recording and just play something, say, And that's how you record a sequence. The sequencer can also record arpeggiator patterns and knob motions. So let's say, use this art pattern, arm recording, and... And we've now recorded the arpeggiator and knob motion together. And you can also record knob motions without recording notes. So let's say you go into the sampler and let's say we wanted to record this knob motion. So hit arm to record and we now have a form of LFO recorded. So if we hold the note now, you'll hear this knob motion and it'll change based on the tempo rate. So that's a nice way to make a custom motion recorded LFO and control its rate using the tempo knob. And then the 201's polyphony depends on the patch. So some patches are monophonic. Some are polyphonic. I think this one has four voice polyphony. And I think the sampler has even more. So those are the basics of the workflow and the synths and ARPs you get in the box. In terms of build and connectivity, the enclosure is aluminum and feels very solid. The buttons and pots feel good. There's a built-in speaker, which is relatively speaking, okay? The 201 can be battery powered with three AA batteries. Just make sure you have a screwdriver handy to open the compartment. And then in terms of connectivity, you've got TRS type A MIDI ins and outs. And then you've got a USB type A jack, which you can use say to connect an external MIDI controller if you want to play these patches with velocity sensitive keys, if the patch is programmed to accept velocity. And you can also use either the MIDI out or the USB type A jack to sequence an external synth, say to use the interesting arpeggiator 
with an external sound source. The 201 can also follow external MIDI clock, whether over USB or the TRS connection. Then you've got an SD card slot to store the operating system and factory and user arpeggiator sound engines and samples. It comes with an 8 gigabyte card, but for now it can only be formatted as a 512 megabyte partition, of which about 200 megabytes are available for user samples and patches. Then you've got a USB type C jack for power and for connecting to a computer for file transfer in disk mode. USB-C, at least for now, doesn't support MIDI. And then you've got officially a single monophonic audio output jack. Unofficially, if you use an insert or stereo breakout cable, you also get a monophonic audio input. So you could theoretically use this as a vocoder or monophonic audio processing unit, but there's no official synth engine that was made available to test this yet. Now, a question you might ask is, how does the Tool 1 compare to an organelle? One of the biggest differences is the screen and the push encoder on the organelle, which enables deeper interactions like diving into menus, meaning more complex patches, seeing parameter values and other forms of visual feedback. And then on the connectivity side, the organelle has a separate headphone output, stereo inputs and outputs, and an additional pedal input. There's also an HDMI output and two USB ports, so you can edit patches directly on the device without a computer. And then the organelle also has a better speaker and more keys and knobs as well as a more powerful internal processor. So it can run more processor intensive tasks and even multiple sound engines simultaneously using the open source ORAC platform. On the other hand, the organelle also costs more and there's something to be said for simplicity along with fast and immediate access to transpose controls. So those are the main differences between the two. One of the things that make both great is the fact that you can swap out the factory synths and add, in this case, both synths and arpeggiator patterns made either by the community, the company, or if you have the time, ones you make yourself. Even if you don't want to look at a line of code or pure data, as I make this video, there are quite a few additional synth engines and arpeggiator patterns available on patchstorage.com. Many of these are by Critter and Guitari, but there are a few third-party ones. And while you can't load organelle patches directly onto the Pocket Piano, since organelle and the 201 are based on the same ARM architecture, it's not a complete rewrite to convert patches from one to the other, which is pretty promising considering that there are hundreds of organelle patches available on patch storage as well. But just to be clear, they're not immediately compatible. Someone has to take these patches and convert them to the 201. Loading up patches is easy once you download either an arpeggiator or synth onto your hard drive. You hit these three keys and shift to go into drive mode and you simply drag and drop additional synth engine or arpeggiator patterns onto these folders on the SD card. Presets, by the way, meaning sequences, are stored in text files in these folders. Anyway, once you've added the synths into these folders, you pick the ones you want to be loaded up by putting numbers in the beginning of their name. So, and I'm going to fast forward through this. You rename the ones you don't want to anything that doesn't start with a number, and then add numbers to the ones you want. While we're at it, same goes for the arpeggiator patterns. So maybe let's just replace these with maybe this and this, and then hit the magic combo for reload, which is this. And we now have six new synth engines and three new arpeggiator patterns. So number one, for example, is 201 Pacifica, a multi-sampled vibraphone. And number three is a resonant low pass filter patch. Number four is the one I used in the intro. Rich FM has a bunch of really nice algorithms and timbre controls. And then number five is a Mellotron. You need to download extra samples for this. I only downloaded two of them, so I've got two engines in here. And it's got a few parameters that you control, not only with these knobs, but also with shift and the knobs. So this is the uh, classic Mellotron flute. And you've got pitch control here. And then a bonus shift parameter, which is tape warble. Which can get a bit crazy. And this is how you choose samples. It's a bit hard to find the spot, but this is the cello. The Pacifica patch, by the way is also a relatively simple patch that just plays 
multi-samples in a folder. Each MIDI note gets a different sample. So if you want to sample any other hardware or software instrument, you can use a free auto sampling tool like MPC Beats, rename the files based on their MIDI notes, which might be a bit tedious, but then you've got a very portable multi-sampled instrument to go. Then in terms of custom ARPs, this one's an interesting one where each subsequent note you hold plays at a different rhythmic interval. So first one. Of course, when you play, the note matters too, because this is based on small sequences. If you play them all at the same time, you get this pattern. All these text-based patterns have text files that you can edit, which control note pitch, velocity, and rests. So these are previews of the files. They're pretty easy to edit. I won't cover this because Critter and Guitari have a great video about this on their channel. And then if you want to take things to the next level, you can create your own custom synths using Pure Data and other open source tools. You can start patches from scratch, but it's always useful to load up an existing patch and take a look at what's going on under the hood. For those of you not familiar with Pure Data, it's an open source visual programming language for creating musical instruments. To really oversimplify it, programming Pure Data is similar to hooking up guitar pedals or Eurorack modules to each other, except these modules can do a lot more and are much less appealing visually. Now, currently there are two ways to edit patches on the 201. What I just did, which is opening up a Pure Data file from the internal SD card, doesn't let you hear changes in real time. So you'll have to make changes, save them to the SD card and then reload the patch. An interesting alternative to this cumbersome process is an editing environment made by Martin Werner, AKA Twang69, called Mother-in-Law, available for free on patch storage. This lets you run and preview 201 patches directly on your computer, as long as they don't use any external compiled objects that don't have a version compiled to whatever OS your computer is running on. Unfortunately, this applies to most of the factory patches, so you'll get a bunch of error messages here, but the simple sample-based ones work just fine, and I, took a patch by Martin, that's the Pacifica 201 patch, that's this one over here, and I made a few changes to it. So for example, theoretically, the 201 doesn't have any built-in effects, but you can make plenty of great effects in pure data. What I did here is hack into the output of the patch, add a delay line that I wrote the audio into, then I pick up that audio in two different taps and feed that audio back into the signal chain and then as a bonus feature, hijack knob two to control the feedback, the delay feedback. So this is the original patch and this is my patch with delay taps. So if I have feedback all the way down, you'll just hear the two taps and as I increase feedback, things get crazy into self oscillation. And that's how you create your own patches. And then finally, if you want to take customizing the 201 to God mode, you can actually customize the 201's operating system itself. And that's what these two nice patches do. So say, for example, if you want fewer arpeggiators and more than six synth modes, you can use one of these to get nine or even 12 simultaneous synth modes. Before I head out to the pros and cons, just a quick word about MIDI settings. You can't access them on the panel, but you can via a text file. This lets you control various things like MIDI input and output channels, knob CCs, and so on. Okay, let's talk about pros and cons for the 201 Pocket Piano. There are many small form factor synths out there at this price or cheaper by companies like Korg, Roland, IK Multimedia, and others. The things that make the 201 stand out are how simple and immediate it is to use, the multiple synth engines, and the fact that it's open source, meaning that the potential for new synth engine types and new arpeggiator types is limited only by either your creativity or the willingness of its user community to develop for it, and of course the available CPU power. The only other multi-synth engine option at this price range that I can think of is the formidable Micro Freak from Arturia. While it's not open source, Arturia has done an amazing job of enhancing it with multiple synth engines. Micro Freak also has plenty of hands-on sound design controls as opposed to only three knobs on the 201. Now, you can have as many LFOs, envelopes, and even effects like I showed you earlier on the 201, presuming that you make your own using pure data, which requires quite a learning curve or if somebody else made those patches. But in terms of hands-on controls, this is probably as minimalist as it gets. Other cons are the lack of a screen, so you can't see synth names or 
parameter names or values, and the fact that the keys aren't velocity sensitive. Aside from those things, Critter and Guitari have carved quite an interesting niche for themselves. No other hardware manufacturer that I'm familiar with offers a synth at anywhere near this price or the organelle's price that lets you create your own synth patches and arpeggiator patterns which makes this quite unique. And if you value those things wrapped up with very minimalist controls, then this is well worth a look. So that's it for 201 Pocket Piano. If you liked the insights in this video, there are plenty more in my ever-expanding book of electronic music ideas, tips, and tricks available to the people who support this channel on Patreon. Hit like if this was useful. Ring the YouTube bell below if you want to make sure you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching. Thank you.